I've said about learning from your mistakes, the best thing to do is learn from other guys' mistakes. I mean, you know, it's like, you know, Patton used to say, you know, it's an honor to die for your country. Make sure the other guy gets the honor, you know. And, uh, <laughs> so our approach is, is, is really to try and learn vicariously. We have no predetermined course of action whatsoever at Berkshire. We have no strategic planning department. We don't have any strategic plan. We, we, we react to what we think are opportunities. I also want to say proudly that we have no mission statement. No, the important thing, even in your work, I mean, is, is to an extreme extent, it seems to me, is, is who you do it with. I mean, it, uh, you can have, if you're going to spend eight hours a day working, the most important thing isn't how much money you make, it's, it's how you feel during those eight hours in terms of the people you're interacting with and how interesting what you're doing is and all of that. Well, you know, I consider myself incredibly lucky in that respect. I can't think of anything I'd rather do, and I can't think of any group of people I'd rather do it with. And... If you ask me to trade away a very significant percentage of my net worth, either for some extra years on, or being able to do during those years what I want to do, you know, I'd do it in a second. I think it's way more important what you've thought about for two years than what you've practiced for 10 years. So if you're, if, if the direction, if they, there's a divergence in, in techniques applied, I would rather be with the one that I'm philosophically uh, in sync with. But there's certain qualities that you admire in other people, that you find likable, that you and and, and, and cause you to want to be around uh, certain people. And then look at those qualities and say to yourself, which of these is it physically or mentally impossible for me to have? And the answer will be none. When you get to be my age, uh, you will be successful if the people that... Uh, that you would hope to have love you do love you. I mean, you if uh, Charlie and I know a few people that have got a lot of money and they get testimonial dinners and they get their names on buildings and and the truth is nobody loves them and you know not their family, not the people who named the buildings after them. You know, it's uh, it's sad and it's unfortunately it's you know it's it's something you can't buy. I mean. Charlie and I have talked a lot of times if we could just buy a million dollars worth of love, you know, I mean, it, uh, it would be so much more satisfactory than to try and be lovable. Uh, <laughs> but it doesn't work that way, you know. One of the interesting things about investment is that there's no degree of difficulty factor. I mean, if, you, if, if you're going to go diving in the Olympics and try and win a gold medal, you... you you get paid more in effect for certain kinds of dives than others because they're more difficult and, and they properly adjust for that factor. But in terms of investing, there is no degree of difficulty. If something is staring you right in the face and the easiest decision in the world, the payoff can be huge. And we get paid not for jumping over seven foot bars, but for stepping over one foot bars. First of all, I'd say marry the right person. Uh, <laughs> and I'm serious about that. <laughs> it, you know, it will make more difference in your life. It'll, it'll change your aspirations, all kinds of things. So it, it is enormously important uh, who you marry. Uh, uh, beyond that, I would say that do what you would do if you were in my position. where you, The money means nothing to you. You don't have that much competition in this world. Uh, so uh, in terms of generally... In generally advancing within organizations, I think you'd be surprised that how little competition you really have if you start thinking like you would if you were an owner of the place and working like you would if you were an owner of the place, and pretty soon you may be, you may be running something. We have a letter that goes out every roughly two years. It starts off basically and it says, look, we've got all the money we need. We'd like to make more money. We love making money, but we don't have a shred more reputation than we need, and <coughs> we won't trade reputation for money. I don't, think it, I don't think you necessarily have to get a bad result or have children that don't have any incentives um, simply because their parents are rich. I really think if, if you're rich and your kids turn out 
to have no incentives. I think I don't, I don't think you should point at them. I think you pro- should probably point at yourself. The safest thing, well, the greatest asset to own is your own abilities. I mean that no matter what happens in the economy or with currency, if, if, if you're if you develop your own talents, I tell the college students that the best thing to have is your develop your own talents. I really think if you want to be a good evaluator of businesses, uh, uh, an investor, uh, you really ought to figure out a way without too much personal damage to run a lousy business for a while. I think you run a you learn a whole lot more about business by actually struggling with a, a terrible business for a couple of years than you run by than you learn by getting into a very good one where the business itself. It's so good to you.